evening, Dr. Farry, honoured guests, sponsors, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, good evening. I am Jackie Barkley. Um, I'm currently working as a series producer director for BBC Northern Ireland, but previously I worked with students as a media studies lecturer, so I'm particularly delighted to be here this evening to host the fourth annual Royal Television Society Student Awards and annual Master of Ceremonies tonight. Firstly, a little housekeeping. Uh, now, in the unlikely event of an emergency, do please leave the building through the exits, which are clearly marked. You can see them there. Um, but uh, as a former colleague of mine at UTV used to announce, in case of an emergency, follow me and I'll be the first through the door. Now, I'd like to remind everyone to switch their mobile phones to silent, but again, as they say in the RTS, Please feel free to take photos and tweet during the ceremony. And if you do, make sure you use the hashtag RTSNI, RTSNI and hopefully we'll get trending this evening. And I'm certain you'll agree that the venue, the Black Box, is an excellent setting for our collective celebration of your educational excellence at our colleges and universities across Northern Ireland. And the numbers here tonight show what an exciting and much anticipated date in everybody's diaries this has become. This is the fourth time I've been here. And we're delighted that Dr. Stephen Farry, the MLA, former Minister of Employment and Learning, is with us this evening uh, to present the awards. And we look forward to hearing from you a little later. Uh, and we also thank you for being here for the fourth year in a row at the awards. The RTS in Northern Ireland is also delighted to have leaders from the creative industries with us here tonight. Uh, we thank you all for the sponsorship and support you're giving students looking to become the next generation of creatives. And students, this is your chance to show yourselves and your work to some of the biggest names in the industry in Northern Ireland. It's a perfect calling card opportunity, so do please make the most of it. The RTS and I would like to acknowledge the most generous support provided by the Department for Communities through Creativity Month and our award sponsors, Stellify, Westway Films, Crawford McCann Media and Performance Film and Media Insurance. In these challenging times, the support for students entering the industry is particularly welcome, so let's give them all. is going to happen tonight? Well, shortly we'll have the pleasure of hearing from our guest speaker, a shy man, Mr. Stephen Nolan, my colleague from the BBC, and let me share this with you. I'm responsible for first putting Stephen on your television screens, on the UTV, many years ago, but please, please don't hold that against me. Stephen's thoughts will be followed by remarks from Dr. Farry, and we will then have the screening of showreels for the films nominated in the various award categories. And Dr. Farry then will present the awards. And finally, we'll hear from my current boss, Steve Carson, Chair of the Royal Television Society in Northern Ireland and Head of Production at BBC Northern Ireland. So there is absolutely no pressure on me tonight, is there, Steve? <laughs> When called upon award winners, would you come on stage to receive your trophies from our presenters and pause for just a moment for photos which will also be taken up here on the platform. Lecturers from the colleges and universities uh, should join their talented students on stage at that time. And those filmmakers who received commendations or were nominated can collect their signed, signed, uh, signed certificates from registration later this evening. I thankfully PwC accountants Brian Cullinan and Martha Rose, who created such a stir at the Oscars, aren't here, so hopefully things should run pretty smoothly. Following the ceremony, we shall enjoy some, and I didn't write this, fabulous canapes and refreshments of a busy nature. And these have been prepared, well the words were prepared by Aidan Brown, but the actual food and drinks have been prepared by a great team at Crumbs Catering. And we'll also have a Roman photographer taking pictures throughout the evening, so do you please remember, keep smiling at all times. Firstly, ladies and gentlemen, it is a real pleasure to celebrate the success of one of last year's winners at these awards. 
John Murray went through to the UK finals of the RTS Student Awards in London last June. With his perspective on the experience, please welcome Sean Murray. Thank you. I think it's easy to appear at the award ceremonies like this without fully appreciating the year long work that goes into uh, nights such as this. And I'd like to congratulate the Aidan and Sarah uh, and the rest of the team for making uh, tonight such a memorable night for nominees. <laughs> I think when I was asked to uh, speak tonight, I was delighted to, to again get the opportunity to thank uh, a, a number of people for making last year such a, a successful year for myself. Uh, I particularly would like to, to, to mention Queen's University, who over this last number of years has helped me craft my own uh, particular skills and, and my, my own creative practice, uh, both theoretically and uh, practical. And a, a, a special medicine has to go to Dagmar Keeney, uh, but I don't see him here tonight, but whose vast experience uh, in the BBC uh, through many years has helped a lot of people craft their own skills and moved on to do great things within the indigenous film industry. So firstly, I'd like to say that. Secondly, I'd like to thank RTS, both locally and at a nice little level. Uh, without RTS, uh, I, I obviously I wouldn't have had such a successful year myself, and I wouldn't be where I am uh, this year. Uh, I think that they, they, it's commendable that they picked a film that, that sort of details social Jackson, a, a film in many ways which uh, was quite unconventional. I think when I wrote the film, and I made the film, I, I didn't foresee at all uh, me won any awards for the film. I think it was a very personal film to me. And in many senses, it was colloquial. So one thing that I would like to say to you all tonight is, uh, don't be afraid to be on the RTS will give you that platform, uh, as, as, as it worked for me last year. And uh, I do mean that when I say it. I, I, I really do appreciate what RTS has done for me. And I thank you and the rest of the team. Uh, when reflecting on last year's win, uh, I, I have to say that it has opened many doors for myself. Uh, I've just finished uh, in the last year producing a documentary for Al Jazeera. We've just filmed uh, a short film, Guard, which has starred Roma Taggart. I had many great actors, including uh, Ian Michael Henry from Game of Thrones. Uh, I'm now working with Michael Lennox, last year's BAFTA winner and Oscar nominee, on a number of projects over the next year or so. So, in many ways, it has opened doors for me. But it also has given me that autonomy. Uh, I've been respected by people, people have approached me in respect of the work that I've been doing myself. And it has helped me have that confidence to go out and do what I've wanted to do without any constraints. So if I was to give any or say I was any advice, it would be don't be frightened to be, be unconventional. Do, do make films that touch you, make films that not only appeal to emotion and to uh, feeling but also to reason and to intellect. So that would be my advice. Again, thank you everyone for coming tonight. And uh, again, RTS, thank you. Thank you, Sean. On behalf of everyone at RTS, we wish you every success for the future. And if I could just ask Aidan Brown, uh, on behalf of the committee, to just present you with a little our okay, ladies and gentlemen, our keynote speaker this evening is a 43-year-old broadcaster born in Westway Gardens, just above the Woodvale Road in North Belfast, Stephen Nolan. He currently presents nine radio shows a week, five for BBC Radio Ulster and four for BBC Radio 5 Live from Manchester. As well as that, 30 television shows for 2016, 18 episodes of Nolan Live, the Wednesday night uh, live debate show, and the last one got a 50% audience share. I am an anorak when it comes to uh, uh, audience ratings. Um, it's very, very important, and that was absolutely amazing. Um, he's the host of the interview series Story of a Lifetime, which I directed and produced two of the first ones. Um, and he's also responsible for a new business series on BBC One. 
The Sony Radio Awards are radio's equivalent to the Oscars, and past winners have included Sir Terry Wogan, Chris Moyles, Jonathan Ross. Stephen holds the record for having won more Sonys than anyone else in the UK, 10 Gold Awards, including UK Speech Broadcaster of the Year, UK Speech Programme of the Year, and Best Interactive Radio Show three years in a row. He's also won two Royal Television Society Awards. All this not bad for a local Belfast boy who was once turned on for a traffic and travel job. They told him they didn't think he had a voice for radio. I'm so glad I opened the doors for him to <laughs> come onto our screens. Stephen also owns Third Street Studios, a TV production company, which as well as producing television shows, creates television formats. So there's a lot going on behind the screens as well. The company has just made a documentary for Network BBC Three on an autopsy of a 25 stone corpse to highlight the reality of the day. And that film is going to be shown on BBC One Network later this year. So ladies and gentlemen, with his thoughts on this very special evening, please welcome Stephen Nolan. Thank you very much indeed, and, and uh, it's a it's a pleasure to be here. When you when I hear all of that, I kind of think, is that me? So here's here's my story. I used to drive past the BBC as a as a young man, 18, 19 years of age, and I was in awe of that organisation. I still am. I think it's the most incredible organisation in the world, and I mean that it's in my blood. Um, but it rejected me at an early age, and it, it literally told me, because I was shown uh, an email within the BBC where they said, that guy's not one of us, he's never going to work in here, okay? And what that did for me, and I still hold this, it'll never ever leave me, I'm going to prove them wrong, I'm going to be successful, nothing's going to stop me. And it's that, it's that drive. I do not think that I am any more talented than any other presenter. Uh, I certainly don't look like a presenter. I'm holding my trousers up so they don't fall down right now. Um, but I do think that I'm more driven than most other people. So I'm not more talented, but you put a brick on a wall in front of me and I will batter it down. Okay? So if there, is a, if there is one message that I would advise you to take away from me tonight, it is someone tells you you're not good enough, you batter them with your talent, all right? You batter them with your enthusiasm because do you really want it? There are so many people who think they want it and they don't want it because they're not standing out from the crowd. And that's what you've got to do. Some of, some of the early days, you also need people to believe in you. Um, but you create some of that belief yourself from wearing them down. So here's what I actually did. BBC, BBC said no. I wanted it to a, a community radio station at the time called BCR. That was uh, before City had existed. So I literally stood outside until the boss was walking out. A guy called Mike Gaston used to work for the BBC. And I stood outside when he walked his car every day. And I genuinely did that for about six months. And he then let me come in and answer the phones. Uh, Eamon Holmes, who we, who we all know, very talented broadcaster because he makes it look easy. And, and Jackie and I know that that's not the case. Uh, but Eamon is, a, is not just a great broadcaster. He is a very genuine person. And he was, he was doing a, a gig probably for about 20 grand he was doing this gig, but who knows, but he was doing a gig at a, a garden centre about 10, 15 years ago. And uh, I, I, uh, I, you know, there's so many stories I, I, I'm slightly embarrassed to tell you, but I remember the hunger inside me, I remember to this day, the hunger inside me to, to work in this industry was so much that I remember um, sitting in my bedroom crying 
because I couldn't work in the industry. I couldn't get a break. Right? And Eamon Holmes was uh, opening up this garden centre and I, I, I stood in the queue waiting to speak to him. And I stayed at the back of the queue, walked up to him um, at the end and I, I handed him a little recording that I had gone out and done myself. They probably thought I was some type of, of perv or something, but I was up on a Saturday night among all these Queen's University students just asking them stupid questions. And I handed this to him and, and he saw something. Do you know what he did? Now he, he, was, he was a massive star on Saturday night television at that time. Eamon gave me his personal phone number and said, ring me next week. And what he then did was, he went and he spoke to Jackie and he said, I think there's, I think there's something I think there's something about that guy. And Jackie then brought me in for, I think it was a, a week, something like that, was it? Uh, we, we made a film, didn't we? No, we came, we were a friend, a reporter on Family Matters. A reporter on Family Matters, that's right. Long, long time ago. What's that about? That's about also some of the older people. You know, some of the guys sitting around here that do have influence. That's about you making sure that you're, you're sticking out to one of them, and then also being prepared to make it happen for someone that they think is special. Make yourself special, all right? Do that. And I truly, truly believe that, that you will make it. I went for the traffic and travel jobs in the BBC, they did say. I didn't, I didn't have a voice for radio, which I, I love now. There's a, there's a contract uh, person who's just left the BBC called Kathleen McGee. I, you know, they, they try to drive your price down, and every time I'm trying to add a wee knob on, I say to her, don't have the really voice for review, but just add another wee, just add another couple of quid on to that. And that's maybe, that's maybe 15, 20 years um, later. You are part of such an exciting industry. It's amazing the feeling when you are in it and part of it. Um, and there's something happening in your time now, which is that you can genuinely take these big broadcasters on. You can take people like me on, and the BBC on, and UTV on, and you can make as good as what they're doing, because you've got the platform. Um, you, can, you can suck people who have experience dry with of their knowledge, um, and their contacts, are you going to do that? Are you going to get yourself into one of these organisations? Are you going to go out and make a film and put it on YouTube and put it on all of these platforms and get more hits than some of the programmes that I'm presenting or other people are presenting? Or are you going to make a film that you can be proud of, that you know is good, and then make it even better and better? Because everything's changing now. You can you can be seen, you can be noticed if, you, if you're dedicated to it. There are, there are I, I'm just watching some talented people on the internet, posting things online who have great editing skills, great filming skills, great ideas, and people are getting noticed. Do it and, and make it happen for yourself. And also, also what do you want to achieve? What do you want to... What do you want to be? Be focused on that too. Do you want to be, don't, don't say you just want to be in television because it's boring and it's bland and I think people will, will kind of think, well, you need to be more focused than that. You want to be a really good editor? There's a lot of power in production. They try to have power with presenters. Um, there's, 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 some, there's a world of opportunity out there. And remember that message from me, anybody puts a brick wall up, you batter it down with your enthusiasm and your drive. The other thing is, last thing for me, if there was someone torturing me at the moment with talent and ability, and they weren't just saying it, they were showing me something, I've got, I've, you know, I've got a couple of quid now. I, I, I probably would give them a gig, but you know what the scary thing is? Nobody's tortured me over the last year. 
Nobody's come to me. The last person that did, I have given them a gig. Nobody's come to me and said, look at that brilliant film I've made. Or any of you actually thinking of, or any of you actually thinking of creating something and battering the door of the BBC or anywhere else down and saying, look at this. I would advise you to do that and believe in yourself. And just like this kind of not so good looking, not so conventional looking, but BBC presenter, you can do it too, because I did it. I'm no better than any of you, but I'm driven. Thank you very much indeed. Driven, the man is is a is a workaholic, absolutely. Um, okay, now a well-known Chinese proverb says, "Teachers open the door, but you must enter by yourself." Lecturers have such an impact on education and therefore your future careers, and they've played a huge part in helping you get to where you are now. The academic support staff at all of the colleges and university departments represented here this evening are passionate about their students and share the great pride which family and friends feel on this very special evening. And I genuinely believe that, and I know because of my time lecturing at Belfast Met just how, how, how we feel about our students and their work. You're like, you're like our surrogate kids. So now let's give those lecturers and support staff a round of applause as we show them our, your appreciation for their hard work. And Dr. Jonathan Hegarty, Director of Curriculum at Belfast Med, sitting down there at the front, is about to give all his lecturers the rest of the day off. And goodness, Jonathan, you have mellowed since my days. <laughs> now we can proceed to the part of the event that you've all been looking forward to, or perhaps nervously anticipating. The Student Awards Ceremony is an extremely important and special occasion. It's a chance for you to celebrate all your hard work, effort, and dedication with those who have supported you along the way. A panel of industry, industry professionals spent a large amount of time watching every film that was entered into the competition, and the reports back were that, are that they were greatly impressed by the level of creativity and talent which was shown by the entrance. So with his thoughts on this very special evening, will you please welcome on stage the former Minister for Employment and Learning, Dr. Stephen Farry, MLA. Thank you very much, uh, Jackie, and uh, good evening, everyone. I'm very pleased actually made up on the, on the steps just to tell a, a brief story about Belfast Met from my time as, as Minister. There was one occasion where we had a very important uh, international conference uh, up on the E3 campus, several hundred um, delegates from around the world. and. Uh, it was actually the, the one day that Aidan Brown took off uh, from his duties and uh, the stage, I, went, I approached the stage and uh, discovered that the steps hadn't been properly fastened to the stage. So I approached from an inappropriate angle, so we ended up doing a, a full tumble onto the, the stage in front of all these uh, guests and I had to pick myself up and set, my line was uh, that was some local performance art that we, <laughs> we do as a, as a custom. Uh, to, to welcome our international visitors. Speaking of uh, performance art, um, we're in the, the slightly surreal uh, situation uh, tonight where um, I am here for my uh, fourth uh, RTS award, so it's almost down as a as, as force of habit. But um, I, I'm here as, as a former minister as opposed to uh, any of the potential current ministers that we would have otherwise had in place. So I'm not sure if this is now going to become a trend where foreign ministers are now invited, uh, given the current political vacuum, to be doing all sorts of, of different events. 
But I was uh, very pleased nonetheless uh, to have the invitation back uh, to the RTS Awards. They certainly were, were one of my favourite events uh, whenever I was uh, the Minister uh, for a number of reasons. It, uh, first of all, it's a great opportunity to showcase the local talent that we have here in Northern Ireland and to, to really uh, celebrate the, 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 the real potential that is on display and how that can have an impact in terms of our own local economy, but also putting Northern Ireland on the wider map uh, in, internationally. Uh, and it's really important that we do focus upon those industries where Northern Ireland really can make that difference. And clearly all of the creative arts, including in particular film, TV, multimedia, are areas where Northern Ireland has a real strength uh, and we are well respected around the world. But it's one where we have to ensure that we build upon the foundations that have already been set and that you all follow in the very solid footsteps of your predecessors who have put Northern Ireland on the map. But our credibility does depend upon building upon their success because the competition out there is, is, is very steep. But it's also an opportunity to really showcase the great work that's happening in our colleges and universities uh, right across Northern Ireland. And I'm certainly joined with Jackie in, in recognising uh, the real uh, dedication uh, that's shown by lecturers and all the staff uh, across all of the colleges and uh, universities. Over the past number of years, we've, we've seen a real evolution in terms of our uh, uh, higher education and further education sectors. They have become a lot more focused around the needs of the economy in terms of the type of courses that they are providing, but not just in terms of a high level, they've also been very clearly focused around employability skills and ensuring that people have the, the, the skills that are relevant to the economy and that, and that they're investing in the right areas uh, and, and ensuring that what's coming through is going to be relevant uh, to the future. And also that people have the, the ability to interact uh, in terms of employability skills, for example, t uh, team building, and also the, the, the creativity and innovation that's so important uh, in, in the workplace. So we have taken that uh, very much uh, to a new level. And the RTS awards themselves are a great opportunity uh, to showcase uh, that achievement. And I'd also just like to pass on my thanks once again for the RTS for putting on uh, these awards because it not only is an opportunity uh, to showcase uh, the great work, it's also a good opportunity for all of you to network with people who are already working in a whole range of different fields within the industry and to build up uh, those contacts that are so important uh, in the sector um, because it is very much opportunities to depend upon sometimes making those contacts and being forward in terms of putting yourself uh, in, in the eye of those who are making key decisions. I think uh, it was a very strong message from Stephen Nolan uh, in that uh, particular uh, regard. So in closing, I want to pass on my congratulations to all of you who have uh, been entered for uh, this competition and to stress that, that you're all winners in, in terms of, of getting this recognition uh, tonight. But I would say a, a particular congratulations to those who are about uh, to win uh, the, the awards formally. But for all of you, I wish you a great success in terms of your uh, future careers. And I know that you're all going to do uh, your respective institutions and indeed uh, Northern Ireland itself uh, very proud in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Barry. And would you please stay on stage uh, for the award ceremony? So now, this is the time we've all been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, our first section is animation sponsored by Performance Film and Media Insurance, and the shortlisted nominations are as follows. Adrift by Bobby Strain, Aidan McNichol, Michael McRae, Rebecca Quinn, and Sam Hudson from Ulster University. Harland and Wolf by Steve Early from Belfast Metropolitan College. And finally in this section, Tuned Out by Peter McNally from the University at Ulster. Now let's have a look at the clips from each of the shortlisted films.
Go in there, find out everything he knows about Valen, and for God's sake, don't screw this one up. I'm looking at you, Wolf. Mm. Hey, man, what the hell's happening here? I ain't talking to nobody without no lawyer. Shut it, crackhead. Crackhead? Who the hell you calling a crackhead, man? I ain't no crackhead. Cut the bull. We know you're affiliated with one Anton Valen. Anton? I don't know any goddamn Anton. Okay, if that's how you want to play it. How about you start by telling us about the drugs found on you? to join Dr. Ferry on stage to present the award. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to announce that the judges awarded a commendation to one of the shortlisted films. The recipient will be able to collect a certificate from the registration desk later this evening. So please join me in offering a round of applause to Steve Early from Belfast Metropolitan College. <laughs> Steve is one of my students. Well done, Stephen. However, the winner in the animation section is Adrift by Bobby Strain, Ian McNichol, Michael McRae, Rebecca Quinn and Sam Hudson from Ulster University.
done to Bobby Aiden, Michael, Rebecca and Sam and many congratulations to the team at Ulster University who obviously supported you. It was exquisite. Ladies and gentlemen, our second award is in the comedy and entertainment category and to present this award it gives me great pleasure to invite Vicky Taggart from Stella Fire Media to join Dr. Farry on stage. Thank you Dr. Farry. And the shortlist of films in this category are as follows. Christine Laroc by Chloe Kelly from Northwest Regional College. Elder Druid, The Warlock made by Brandon Kelly from Northern Regional College. Goodnight St. Mickey by Colin Malarkey from Ulster University. Mochara by Mark Downey, Joe McReynolds, Mark Rainey, James Malhan, Adam Irwin and Connor Dempsey from Belfast Metropolitan College. Knock, knock, I'm here, let's have a little That's the way, here we go Can't get enough of your love Can't get enough of your body Can't get enough of your love Nothing you do will ever consume me Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. <coughs> what the fuck? It's St. Jude the Apostle, actually. The fuck are you? How'd you get out of my house? Who made you a tea? The name's Julian. St. Julian? I'm here to help you with your problem, Mickey. St. Julian? Mate, go down the top there. Are you serious, Chris? Fucking wake up there, yourself. Look, what's wrong with her? Is she not nice looking or something? I have no. Look, listen, you keep on complaining about me. You have no confidence. I'm trying to be your mate here. I'm going to give you the extra push that you actually need. Go down and talk there. Yeah, all right, well. All right, well. Give me a go, go. No surprise that there's a special commendation uh, from the uh, the judges, and uh, the winner of the commendation is Colin Malarkey from Ulster University for his film Good Night, Saint Vicky. But we still don't know who the winner is, uh, and the winner in the comedy and entertainment category is Mo Chara by Mark Downey, Jill McReynolds, Mark Rainey, James Mullahan, Adam Irwin, and Connor Dempsey. Oh well, what's crack? Oh, I was cracked, dickhead. What's happening? Are you for real? The first thing you call me in ages, dickhead. You haven't seen me in about three months. Oh, I already dickhead, whatever. Jesus, relax with you. <laughs> Calm down, like. What do you want me for here anyway? 
There's no way about that. Now, you know what I mean? I haven't seen you in ages. I haven't seen you in about, what, three months or something? I You're giving me all this attitude exactly. already. Exactly. Like. Three months. Three months, not a call, not a text, not a message on Facebook, not a wee, stupid wee email. How are you doing, mate? Fucking hell. What are you doing? You still smoking? I am. I'm trying to now. What's, what's the deal? Problem? Every one of you is just going to rag your life like whenever you're older. And what? Bend bag lungs. And what? Not be able to breathe properly whenever you're 30. Oh, shut up, would you? You'll look like a fucking ball bag. Oh, do I care? Do you care? Because I don't. Since when do you care about my life? And why else would I be slobbering to you about it? Oh, because apparently you care now. Guy, what a load Boys of balls. Always care. What a load of balls. Stop talking shit. Whatever. Haven't seen you in three months and trying that with your car and I. Shut up, would you? Why are you being like this for? Like, why are you being like this? I haven't seen you in three months and then you just decide to come out. So and like, you're yeah. saying I need to be up your arse 24 7. Oh, how are you keeping, Chris? What's going on, Chris? I miss you, Chris. Want to go out, Chris, every hour day? Yeah. I can't just arrange yeah. to go out yeah. and see no, you. Like, no, yeah, yeah, you actually do, darn. Do you know what I mean? I stick it 100% with you. Past three months, tags. I've tried to ring you. I've called around. And I've hit you with an email or two. But where have you been? No response or anything until this morning. Come on, Ned. Mum will go to the park. Oh, shut up, would you? Stop talking balls. Well, why'd you come in if you don't give a fuck? If you haven't like seen you in three months, I want to know what you've been up with your fucking life. The fuck, it doesn't matter now anyway, does it? What have you been on anyway? What have I been up? Just so you know, I don't hate your car, but I like, but I got myself a bird, do you know what I mean? Bollocks, did you? Oh, I did actually. Oh. That's right. Who is it? None of your business. You don't know her. Is it uh, a Jill or Palm? Oh, <laughs> ha ha ha. Let's all laugh at Chris. Big joke. Big joke. Ha ha ha. You're a wanker. Nah, seriously, what are you, though? I told you it's none of your business. You don't even know her. I don't know who it is, so it doesn't matter. Will you just relax, mate? Serious? Just calm Fuck. down. Like, calm down. You can't have no crack with you at all anymore. You're just a big fucking crump. You're a big bother sponge. Big wet tea bag. Big wet tea bag, Chris. That's all you are. Chris the big wet tea bag. <laughs> I probably, I've never grown up. Do you know what I mean? I've grown up. Fuck you, you're always just stuck in the past. Doing your hang. Look at me. Ah, that rings a joke to me. I'm darn. <laughs> I'm stuck in the past. I'm just having a bit of crack. Aye, oh, right. That's so all you're doing is just yapping. Wow, so you're old now. You can't have any crack at all. Is that what it is? Fuck's sake. Fuck, Chris, you're funny. What? They don't think you're funny, you're funny. Aye, whatever, Chris, fuck you. You're just a money cunt, that's what you are, that's what you money I won't be a crop over our ass. You know what, fucking will, do you know what, fuck you. Aye, sure you'll see that. Fuck, fuck, see you later, big man. All best. Oh, fucks. You could have fucking called up or something. Like, you ain't shooting a couple of fucking tags. It's just going to keep us a bear. Why ain't shooting us a few tags? Just going to be like, oh, right, sweet ass, no problem, our darn. Keep me all right, dead on. You could have fucking called in. You have no clue what the fuck I've had going on here. You know what I mean? So for once, just fucking sit down, chill out, and just listen to us. Right. Fuck. I'll listen to you then. We're going to waste my time more shit. Yeah, all right. Sweet. I, I wanna, I wanna flip my life around. I wanna try at least the way you did. Like I constantly, I constantly just see myself and just wanna do what you've done. And I don't think I'll ever be able to do that, Chris. Mate, I didn't know you felt like this. How long you felt like this for? Ages now. I wanted to say it, but the fuck's it, hard cut it. You were going out with her for over a month now, and I know who she is. I know where she's from, and I know her name. Mate. But the thing that met to me about it was the fact that you didn't tell us. Know what I mean? I thought that we were closer or not. You never said one fucking word about it to me. At all. Well, why have you never messaged me before? I never wanted to. I didn't want to look like... I didn't want to look like one of them wee needy bastard mates. Mate, shut up. You know you could have told me. And by the way, I don't always have to call in your house to come talk to you. You can come talk to me in my house as well. You know, it's like... I, I can't believe you all the time, you know what I mean? Look, man, I, I'm sorry as well, like, you know what I mean? So, what do you say? We meet again or what? Obviously, we're going to meet again. Are you fucking <laughs> for real? You're just like a big onion, aren't you? 
the fuck are you talking about onions for? You've lost a fucking plot. Do we like have flares and shit in the main? Oh fuck, here we go. Do we get all shrag on here? Jesus Christ. Fuck me. Yo, fuck up. Look at her over there. Hey. There. Look. Yo, come on, get up. What? Get up, follow her. Come on. Get up. Are you come serious? On. Yes, come Why? on. No? Come here. Just come here. Come on. I'll see you. I'll show you now. Come on. Yo, what the fuck are we doing here? Mate, you're gonna go in there. You're gonna ask her, right? Come on. Come on. Mate, go down the top there. Are you serious? Can I fucking wake up there, Mate, look. What's wrong with her? It's not nice looking or something. I have no like, listen, you keep on complaining about me, you have no confidence. I'm trying to be your mate here. I'm gonna give you the extra push that you actually need. Go down and talk there. Yeah, Alright, well. Alright, well. Come on, go, go. Yeah, go, go, go. Excuse me, um, would you mind if I sit here? Yeah, go on then. Cheers, thank you. So, uh, what's your, uh, what's your name? I'm Sophie. And who are you? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm Darn. Uh, nice to meet you, Sophie. It's nice to meet you too, I guess. Did you want something? Look, no it is. I don't do this very often, you know what I mean? So, uh, I don't really know how this works. Um, would you, like, want to go out sometime or whatever? Or, I don't know, like, get your number or something? Look, you seem like a really nice guy, but I've got a boyfriend. Well, sorry, cheers. Sorry for wasting your time. So sorry. Yeah. Well, how'd it go? How do you think it went? Well, I don't know, mate. You tell me. How'd it go? Who? Shot a boyfriend. Well, at least you tried, didn't you? Well, it was for nothing because I didn't get nothing. I made an absolute agent out of myself to find out that after us following her from there into that greenhouse, like a bunch of creeps, she ended up having a boyfriend. A boyfriend. Mate, at least you tried. That was the whole point of this anyway. You try, you talk to someone for the first time in who knows fucking how long. Look, tonight, me and you will go out, I'll buy some pets. My treat, you don't have to worry about anything. Oh, you fucking better off, rat shambles. Mate, Mom. Don't you worry, come on, we'll go. Deceptively layered, well structured short film. Well done, Mark, Joel, Mark, James, Adam, and Connor. And many congratulations to the team at Belfast Met who supported you. Congratulations again. Ladies and gentlemen, our third award is in the drama category, sponsored by Westway Film Productions. And it's now my pleasure to invite Dr. Jonathan Hegarty, Director of Curriculum at Belfast Met, to join Dr. Farry on stage to present 
this award. Thank you, gentlemen. I am going to mention once again that the judges stated that this was a very good category with a very strong standard of work submitted. And the shortlisted films in the drama category are as follows. The Dogs by Joe Muskelly from Ulster University. The Last Keeper by Gavin McKay and Fanula McCann from Northwest Regional College. Recode by Matt Boyd and Rachel Hines from Ulster University. And finally, Ross Shach, a fan film by James Neeson, Matthias Koretsky, Aaron O'Neill, and Christopher O'Neill from Northwest Regional College. So let's have a look at the clips from each of the nominated films. Call him then? Big B. Big B? Well, Big B it is then. I never should have made us go looking for supplies. I just wanted us to help, to be welcomed. Had to get the truth from the various slime balls on the suspect list. None of them gave me anything useful until the last one. He was quiet at first, but he opened up to me after a while. Good. Cooperation's a beautiful thing. the judges award a commendation to one of the shortlisted films and the recipients will be able to collect their certificate from the registration desk later this evening. So please join me in congratulating Joe Muskelly from Ulster University for his film The Dogs. And the winner in the drama category is Recode by Matt Boyd and Rachel Vines from Ulster University. having the same dream, but well, it begins as a dream, but it quickly turns into a nightmare. I can still see you, laughing, happy. I miss that smile. That was before all of this happened. Though. Hacker Group Freedom are taking responsibility for this massive worldwide cyber attack. They have promised that there are more dormant viruses waiting within our infrastructure for the right time. Economists are calling today worse than Black Friday. International crisis talks have been called for, but we are still awaiting responses from the IMF. This cyber attack is serious and could have severely damaging ramifications for our future. Our cybersecurity visions are working tirelessly to find a solution, and we will overcome. Things escalate quickly. 
I don't know how we survived the first year or two. I wish we'd never gone to that community, but things were completely out of control. We seemed to have restored a bit of balance. I never should have made us go looking for supplies. I just wanted us to help, to be welcomed. found me. I wish I had died that day with you. Hey, over here, I found someone. Can you hear me? I can't just leave her. It's been over 700 days since I left that camp. At least I think it is. Time and numbers are pretty irrelevant now. I guess freedom got what they wanted. Everyone is definitely free. Sorry it's been so long since I've written to you. I love you with all my heart, Jessica. Yours always. Ada. How'd you find me? I told you I wanted to be alone, especially from your kind. We could have left you behind two years ago, but we didn't. We saved you, and our kind. We aren't animals. You caused this. This isn't freedom. Exactly not the way we pictured it. We made mistakes. It wasn't meant to be like this. We're fixing it. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> yeah, funny thing. We were on our way back from the city to fix it, and fix it. And how are you trying to fix it? By bringing the electricity back on. But I thought that was impossible. You said atoms are taking control. It was. But we found zero day vulnerability. We can manipulate it and we have the code that can do it. It just needs brought into the city to meet the other groups. Absolutely not. I'm not going back to the sea. My whole group was killed, Oliver. I'm the only one that has our part of the code. You're on your own. When you can't just leave me. But please, this could change things. It can make things right.
There's a way, Jessica. There's a way that this can all be fixed. I haven't been in the sea since it happened. But this could be a way to fix it all. To restore some order. I left you behind. And I can't do that again. Beautifully shot, and what a gorgeous uh, light throughout the, the entire short film. Congratulations, Matt and Rachel, and again, many congratulations to the team at Ulster University who supported you. Now, our penultimate award is in the factual category, sponsored by Crawford McCann. And to present the award, it gives me great pleasure to invite Kelda Crawford McCann to join Dr. Farry on stage. Thank you, Kelda. And the shortlisted films in the factual category are as follows. Civil Rights Stories by Stacey Fitzpatrick from the Northwest Regional College. The Shipyard Poet by Ryan Fitzsimmons, Michael Turner, Ryan Sewell and Kieran Mooney from Belfast Metropolitan College. Paranormal Witnesses by Sheila Jennings from Northwest Regional College. Studio 11 by Ryan Sewell, Amy Caldwell, Stuart Ackerman, Connor McCormick and Ryan Fitzsimmons from Belfast Metropolitan College. And let's have a look at the clips. He worried about him all the time on his work because he was very, very ill. He had bronchitis, uh, TB, which really in a sense he shouldn't have been working at all. And then it, the time came when he was in and out of hospital. And my mother looked after him so well, you know. And she worried about him because he was getting worse and getting sicker all the time. And he would still go out to work. I was introduced to um Tommy Carndoff by the former librarian here at the Linen Hall Library, a guy called Ronnie Adams. And you need to understand that uh, at the very end of his life, um, Thomas Carndoff, uh, his kind of cultural friends, got him a job as caretaker here in the Linen Hall Library. We were walking along and I thought, I don't remember, like rocks being at the edge of the water in Port Salem Beach. And as we got closer and closer and closer, you know, the, these big black ships were there. And I thought that I must be seeing things, I don't know what that, I don't know why, I don't, why would there be these random rocks at the, at the edge of the water.
After, you know, obviously working in film in England for 11 years uh, professionally, um, that was a significant 11. I uh, terminated that whole uh, sort of film experience with my own film, uh, which was called 11, 11, 11. And that was about the total eclipse of the sun on the 11th of August at 11 minutes past 11. And I'm, I'm delighted to announce that in the factual category, and this is very close to my heart because this is actually the module I used to lecture at Belfast Met a few years back. The Shipyard Poet by Ryan Fitzsimmons, Michael Turner, Ryan Sewell and Kieran Mooney from Belfast Metropolitan College. I was introduced to um, Tommy Carndoff by the former librarian here at the Linen Hall Library, a guy called Ronnie Adams. And you need to understand that uh, at the very end of his life, um, Thomas Carndoff, uh, his kind of cultural friends, got him a job as caretaker here in the Linen Hall Library. Thomas Carndoff uh, was the one working class Protestant playwright of the entire period from pre-First World War right through to the early 60s, Sam Thompson. And there was nobody else who had major plays performed. And they'd all vanished. always wrote and talked about what he knew and that's what makes him very important that I think his poetry, his plays and all echo what he felt, not what he thought he should feel, not what he thought he should be writing about, that he was very much a man who was true to himself and I think that comes across in all his writing and that's what makes him a very important writer and one who should be a lot better known than he is. And when he died, um, some of his papers, uh, you know, were found or, or were with the library. And in the late 70s, um, this is before I worked in the Linen Hall, and Ronnie Adams knew that I was interested in labour history. Um, and he told me that he'd got this un parts of an unpublished uh, autobiography by this guy called Thomas Carndoff, The Shipyard Pot. And I mean, I was already aware of the sheer dearth, uh, the lack of memoirs or recollections by, in particular, um, uh, working class Protestants. Um, so I was immediately fascinated. He wrote very much about what he knew, very much about his own experiences. So I think it's important that he had the experiences he had. Being in the shipyard, sort of, first of all, the kind of work he was doing. And secondly, the idea, because the shipyard, always from what you see about it, what you know about it, from what you hear from people who work there, there's a very strong sense of community. I think that gave him the encouragement to write about it. I think he saw it as something very important in the history of Belfast. He's always very proud of being a Belfast man, 
shipyard is such a big part of the city and the fact too that at some stages of his life he wasn't working that the songs of an out of work sort of thing are very important as well. I think he's very good at using his own experience. He doesn't try to be something he's not. And I think that's where his writing succeeds because what he writes about is what he knows, what he feels, what he thinks. And that echoes for so many people that they've had similar experiences, that that makes it much easier for him to be understood and to appeal to a very, very wide audience. I had a sympathy with uh, um, Karndorf's kind of uh, restlessness with regard to uh, both his working situation, um, the life of an unskilled worker before the First World War, um, then you know, working in the shipyards, um, losing his job seven times in the 1920s, um, and then eventually losing his job altogether. I had a sympathy with that whole narrative, uh, and a sympathy with his endless kind of seeking out of better things and alternative ways of looking at things. Now, as a playwright, you know, you then, uh, and I think probably that's where um, his most significant claim to fame lies. Um, uh, he has a tremendous ear for working class dialogue, um, for the vernacular, for the Belfast vernacular. Um, you know, great exchanges, uh, his dialogue, um, his dialogue lives. I want to live outside mere words, to hear the song of tiny birds, to see the sunrise crimson tip, the mountain's rim, and with my lip touch some bright stream that gurgle by. Oh God, I want to before I die. I want to spend some glad hours with some garden strewn with flowers upon a moorland, wild and bleak, where I may walk with God and speak my mind to him, God would forgive because he knows I want to live, I want to live. The shipyard has never looked or sounded lovelier. Well done Ryan, Michael, Ryan and Karen, and again congratulations to you and your team at Belfast Met. Now our final category is the short feature section and Dr Parry, may I ask you to come back onto the stage. I am pleased to announce that the winner, do we show something Aidan or do we go straight to the winner? Go straight the winner. The winner is Kings Park Primary School by Joel McReynolds, Mark Rainey, Connor Dempsey, James Malahan from uh, Belfast Metropolitan College. My name's Aidan Skinner uh, and I'm uh, fortunate enough to be principal in Kings Park Primary. I've been here for just coming up on three years. 
and uh, very happy to be here. Well, we have an ethos statement which is maximising potential in a safe and friendly environment. Uh, and then the friendly environment is again about our family atmosphere that we work very hard to, to build on and to put across even to outside folks coming in. I'm Gemma McCary, I'm the Vice Principal at Kings Park Primary School and a P7 teacher. One of the many features making our school so special is the positive open relationships between teachers and pupils and parents. Well there are lots of really great things about teaching but I think it's just a privilege to get to work with children every day and build relationships with them and watch them grow as a person, watch them learn new things academically but also socially and emotionally and I do think it's probably the most rewarding job there is. Uh, my name is Mr McReynolds and I'm one of the P6 teachers in Kings Park Primary School. We have over 100 iPads in the school which provide lots of new opportunities for learning in the classroom. For example, we're using two new programs called Mathletics and Reading Eggs which use exciting online interactive games to consolidate the skills taught in the classroom. Hi, my name is Mr Campbell and I coach football in Kingsport. We've got weekly football or practice sessions which a large number of both boys and girls from P5 to 7 attend. We play in friendly matches against local schools and in cup competitions. There are also opportunities to develop skills in individual sports such as tennis, gymnastics, dance and swimming. I think there are a few places that are more uplifting than a primary school and you manage to capture that lovely carefree atmosphere beautifully. Well done Jill, Mark, Connor and James and again thank you to Belfast Metropolitan College who supported you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Northern Ireland Committee of the Royal Television Society has within its ranks a wealth of academic and industrial experience which has been put to work in organising and judging this competition. So with his Thoughts on this very special evening. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Steve Carson, Head of Production at BBC Northern Ireland and Chair of the RTS in Northern Ireland. Steve. Thank you, Jackie. Um, I'm fairly sure this is the last speech before we can get uh, stuck into the cannabis. house. Um, really, I just want to sort of do, do a few things. First of all, to thank the, the range of people that pulled together to make uh, the awards happen. Uh, obviously Stephen Nolan and, and Jackie, uh, Sean and Stephen Nary. I think it possibly was a nice change for Stephen Nary to be near Stephen Nolan and near a microphone, but in very different circumstances. Um, Paul McGuigan, uh, one of our uh, judges, I'd like to thank and Darren Chan, uh, other colleague who helped uh, put the clips together. Uh, I'd like to welcome Adrian from our sister centre in the Republic of Ireland. Um, the RTS is a, is a network of people uh, from all parts of the industry, from all parts of the British Isles, in fact, and it's nice that we have representation from Dublin tonight. Uh, in particular, I'd like to thank Sarah Gunn-Smith uh, and Adrian Brown, who've done uh, by far the bulk of every lesson. I briefly want to congratulate all the winners and the nominees and when the people commended. I, I was one of the judges and it was a uh, it's a really interesting and pleasurable experience going through all the, uh, the entries, uh, the kind of the range and the quality and just some of the themes that were emerging um, from the generation uh, you guys that were submitting um, was professionally and creatively actually very interesting. Um, you know, this is the RTS spiel, but you know, to be nominated, commended or to win is a real coup and actually uh, at an early stage in your career having an RTS award uh, on your CV gives you a profile in the industry from, from, from the get-go. As you can see from the, the, the thanks list there, there's a whole cast of people pulled together to do these awards. 
So the, re the reason why the Royal Television Society runs Students Awards is to have a snapshot of the talent that's there at the moment coming out of the colleges, but also to help to establish uh, a pipeline, to build a pipeline from the colleges into the industry uh, proper. Um, the industry at the minute in Northern Ireland is going through a, a very strong patch. Uh, I think if you see uh, BBC One on Sunday night, Line of Duty, uh, now <coughs> moved to BBC One in the biggest drama slot there is that's made here, Game of Thrones of course. Um, and everything from infrastructure, if you go to Belfast Harbour today, there's about to be two um, really large sign stages opened up and that obviously complements the, the capacity already over in Titanic as well. So the industry actually in many ways has never been healthier and I think it's a very positive uh, time for you guys if you are interested in, in joining. Um, none of that happened by accident. I do have a personal theory, I think Northern Ireland is potentially in the fortunate position to be large enough to have the talent and the scale that we can kind of operate globally, but we're small enough to have those sort of informal networks where all the people can pull together pretty quickly to actually get things done. Um, but, you know, future success isn't guaranteed, but what I can say to you is the Royal Television Society, which uniquely actually spans the entire industry from agencies, broadcasters, colleges, indies, um, you know, people are working hard to make sure there is a sustainable industry here so that um, people from here uh, there are jobs and opportunities in this industry here if you want and that we no longer have to have generation after generation bred for export as was in the past. You can play a part in that too, you can be, uh, join in as well. Uh, the good news is if you're a student you can join the Royal Television Society for free from our Futures branch which has just been reconstituted under Jordina who is here. Um, the process for that is very simple, if you just leave us your details there on reception we'll be in touch uh, and again you can start that process of playing your own part but also networking with people as we said tonight in the industry. Finally really uh, I want to thank our sponsors without whom none of this could happen. Uh, we've got a range of sponsors tonight from the Department of Communities, Stellify, Crawford McCann, Performance Media Insurance and uh, Westway Films. So thanks to you, thanks to you for coming, congratulations to everyone nominated, commended and winning. It's, uh, it's been a really great evening. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, folks, that's just about it. I hope you've uh, enjoyed the awards ceremony. And uh, as Steve has just said, thank you to everybody who made it all possible. Final thought, um, there is a sentimental dimension to tonight. Um, the feelings of pride and recognition aren't to be sniffed at. The public acknowledgement and applause for your work tonight is a very big thing. I know I've been there once. Once I got a documentary nominated uh, for an award, the Celtic Film Festival, my Morelli's documentary was um, nominated as a documentary of the year many, many, many moons ago. But I've carried that nomination with pride throughout my entire working uh, life. And okay, it didn't win and yes, Hearts break a little when you don't, but take all the good vibes and comments that came with your nominations tonight and remember that it could be you on this stage, uh, the winning stage next year. And of course, a big congrats to all tonight's uh, winners. May this be the start of your brilliant career. And finally, in closing, can I just let you know that those drinks, those fizzy drinks and canapes uh, will be served in the area to my right and there will be plenty of time to congratulate the winners and rub shoulders with our industry professionals. So students, get networking. And remember, you can chase any job you like in broadcasting, except mine. Thank you very much indeed.